What's on this week's episode of Startup Hustle TV? <laughs> I guess we're gonna find out. I've had a lot of mentors over the years. I have a lot of mentors. I'm very, very fortunate that a lot of people have invested in my success. Most of my mentors and people that I've learned from have been my coworkers and my co-founders. All the leadership that I had in the Army, I had good quality leadership. And that meant a lot to me and really kind of made the person that I am today. You know, I, I hear often from people that it's difficult to find a mentor. Um, and I, 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 I push back on that. Like, I, I, don't, I don't actually believe that's true. One thing I do a lot of is help people try to improve their businesses, find opportunities, and do other things. I like doing that. I will say Matt DeCourcy has been a really, really great guide for me. He is not afraid to kick my ass. Lately, I'd have to say Matt DeCourcy has been a great mentor to me. When I need it, um, which sometimes I don't love, but it's always to my benefit. At Stackify, it's, it's definitely people like Craig Farrell, our, our chief operating officer, with full scale, Matt DeCourcy. Matt DeCourcy has been a, a mentor or a guide. Both as a chief marketing officer, as an entrepreneur, and as someone who's starting their own TV show. Need to know everything, who in the what and the where I need everything. Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche, there's five and a horse, I'm ready for war, I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost, I need to know everything. When it comes to anybody that's on this show, I want to do whatever I can or we can to help them move their business forward. Another weird and exciting thing happening is that this Startup Hustle TV family is actually more like a family than you would think. So over the last couple of weeks, I've spent uh, a, a fair amount of time talking to Eric Perkins. And why? Well, A, I like talking to him because Eric's just a great guy and he's got so many interesting things going on in and around his business. And with that, I want to help. Uh, Matt DeCourcy, uh, Startup Hustle TV producer, is actually helping me build something I really need, which is a fan website. Like, I don't even have a website for Perkins Builder Brothers. There's nothing. <laughs> I actually have some previous experience working with another YouTube influencer and helping build that brand. And I'll tell that story another time. <laughs> I have like, it's like a, it's just a link to a Teespring site, which sells some kind of crappy gear. Well, I don't wanna say crappy. It's, it's not as good as it could be. So Matt and his crew, his team, are gonna help me to build a good website that sells good merchandise and actually has good pictures and information so that people will enjoy it. So I'm super excited about that, thanks to Matt. And you may even get to see you know, part of uh, how that happens on this show or on the web somewhere on YouTube. So much of Eric's success is built on years of hard work but now it's really accelerating. And he's finding that he's got a lot of things coming from a lot of different directions. And I'm just trying to do whatever I can, whenever I can, to give him some input or advice about uh, scaling a business and building it in a way that you don't have a ball of rubber bands that you're gonna have to stop and undo at some point. Things are changing with YouTube very quickly. Uh, I'm used to being this guy that's in the woods just building houses. Nobody knows where I am. Nobody knows who I am. And all of a sudden, we've got all these people following us online on YouTube. And uh, people know how to search on the internet and find my phone number and my email address because they're out there. And that's because I put them out there. So I've spent the last week, uh, thank you, Matt DeCourcy, for being my counselor, uh, sort of getting some of these things out of sight a little bit more because uh, I like talking to people, but I found that I'm spending, I don't know, half of my work day talking to people that I wasn't planning on talking to because they call me or email me and I wanna try to help them out, which is great, but I still have to be productive at work and that's becoming a problem actually. You grow so fast and so many things are going in a forward direction that you run out of bandwidth and you start leaving things and scraps and breadcrumbs all over the place. And eventually you gotta go back and clean those up. And I think that 
as I've gotten older and more experience as an entrepreneur, I've gained more respect for that. The other cool thing is I've really learned that I need to keep learning. Um, I don't know everything. In fact, I barely know anything is what I'm learning, which is uh, a little scary and depressing. But I, I, you know, I like challenges, so uh, I'm gonna keep pushing hard with what I'm doing, making content, and I hope that all these other things can kind of fall into line or, or happen somehow. That, that's the entrepreneurial spirit. I hope it happens somehow, and I hope it does happen somehow uh, and doesn't end up to be a train wreck in the end. I'm confident that I will figure it out with the help of uh, all the people I have involved now, and uh, it's gonna be great. Overall, just trying to do the best I can to try and help him any way I can because that's what I'm trying to do on the show. I think that a lot of people, they tend to be afraid to ask. You know, I, I, I take a different tack when, it, when I'm, you know, looking at somebody that I want to establish that kind of relationship with. Um, I tend to tell them, I'm like, congratulations, you're my mentor. Every so often I get reached out to about mentoring or coaching someone um, so they can learn how to do Amazon themselves. I like to take one every now and then to just keep me sharp. Often people hesitate to ask. Um, you know, you have someone in your life who's seen it before, done it before, and I feel like most of the mentors that I've worked with, they take it as a huge compliment if someone asks them. So people ask me a lot to invest in their business. And you know, if, if they can't do it, if they don't have the time, if they don't have the mental bandwidth, that's, that's a possibility. I usually say no. Why? I don't do a lot of that. Sometimes I run into situations where someone who asks may receive this as an option. You can have my money or you can have me interested in you being successful. Which one do you pick? What, what's the saying? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. What do you think people pick? What do you think people overwhelmingly pick? Or what do you think the smart ones pick? Because it's the second answer, in my opinion, that's a lot more valuable. Um, so, so ask, identify those people, like find the people who are smarter than you in certain areas and who have experienced things that you're about to experience or that you're currently experiencing and just reach out to them. We became entrepreneurs, Heather and I were kind of lone wolves in, in the, uh, in the whole scheme of things. And so we actually joined the Beta Blocks program, which is an accelerator. And they've really been able to give us good advice on getting started, what to do, what not to do, and just guiding us through the whole process. Immediately drastically changed our business, honestly. Uh, we were able to go from just being a mom and pop store to manufacturers of our own product. And we did that relatively quickly. My business mentors have been Justin Prestige and Wes Bergman. Wes Bergman and uh, Justin Prestige were, were our two main ones that really helped influence us. Um, we were able to meet both of them and met both of them through our business incubator we were a part of at Beta Blocks. Honestly, I, I had a lot of um, advice and, and guides and mentors at, a, at arm's length for a long time because there wasn't anyone in my space that was offering me leadership advice. And until someone could try to put themselves in my shoes or understand tech or technology, uh, a lot of the leadership advice that was coming to me had nothing to do with what I was doing. Um, so for years of my business, in the early stages, it was it was really just me trying to trying to read, you know, follow Gary V when it comes to marketing or branding, follow some of these industry leaders. Um, but more recently, it's it's people like Matt Corsi. And tried to figure out ways to make me better, so that I can be better for the people I serve. But overall, if you find the right people, mentors, advisors, uh, partners, and people that want to work with you. That has a lot of long-term upside. I had a, a conversation with Matt and uh, we were kind of talking about the different things that I'm offering. And I, on my podcast, I often talk about being self-employed and then being a business owner and how there's a difference between the two. And uh, it's awesome to be able to talk to mentors because oftentimes they're going to call you out on stuff that you didn't quite understand. And the thing that's also really valuable is if you can find people that can do anything to accelerate your path to success, that could be introductions, it could be advice that helps you avoid time loss. 
maybe that you were doing or the direction you were heading in or whatever that situation may be. And so I'm having a conversation with Matt and he basically points out, you know, where he sees my strengths and where I might be wasting my time. Anything that speeds up the timeline to your success, you really can't even put a price on it. And the reason you can't do that is it's an unknown. You have no idea how much it would have or could have cost you if someone didn't move that time frame forward. Uh, but there's another thing he said that is pretty uh, amazing, kind of stuck with me. He said, uh, next time when you're asking for something, you should approach somebody with how can we make money together? Or how can we make something grow? How can we, because the we also includes the other person and it brings them into your vision, into what you're trying to accomplish. And you never know what kind of resources or doors that can open as well. Really, as I've got, gained more experience as an entrepreneur and I have grown as an entrepreneur and become a much better entrepreneur, I'll tell you what, I'm all about the relationship. Thanks for being a good mentor, man. I mean, that's that makes all the difference in the world. Sometimes it's the little changes, those little hints, those little sudden turns that uh, that find you and uh, shape you into becoming a better entrepreneur. Meaning, like the right thing to do, like the right opportunity. So, so I have I have people that well, I was like that with Matt Watson. Matt Matt and I knew that we would do something. We knew that we would do some type of something entrepreneurial together, but we didn't know what. And I actually, Matt gave, at one point, gave me a free office at what later became the Full Scale and Stackify office. He gave me a free office so I had a place to come to work. We were around each other and we were able to talk, collaborate, and figure stuff out. Now look, Matt is one of the smartest and honestly most successful entrepreneurs I've ever known. And I saw so much value in that that, I mean, I, I jumped at the opportunity and we spit a lot of ideas out. We talked about a lot of stuff. We d d really flirted with a lot of different things. And I'm glad we waited because the whole, everything we did with full scale and Gigabook and all that, wow. I mean, it became everything I do and that we do now. We have a company that generates millions of dollars in revenue within its first few years and it's recurring revenue and it's growing. I mean, it's amazing. Pretty sure I'm buying another brand today. We potentially had this brand that Marknology had been working off and on with for four years on a project level basis. They came to me at the end of December. I've been working with them for four months and said, hey, do you know of anyone looking to buy brands? Um, and I said, I sure do. Uh, connected them with a couple of people they got evaluations um you know they uh were wanting a number almost double uh what we thought the business was worth and what we could give so we offered uh we gave them our number um and did the walk away that's a mad decorsey staple move um and it worked and honestly i don't think it would have happened if we hadn't been around each other if we hadn't taken our time and built the relationships. I think it's been a month maybe since that time. They came back, said, hey, some things have changed and um, they know they could sell it for more money, but they wanted to sell it to um, us because we've been the team that's kind of helped them build the brand. That's a hell of a lot more valuable than money. With Matt, I got both because he also wrote some investment checks and helped us get started. We both did some of that, but I mean, really, in the end, Watson being interested in us and me being successful certainly was a lot more valuable than him possibly being an investor and not ever being involved with what we do. When I was, uh, I want to say about 18, 19 years old, somewhere around there, my dad, uh, he knew that he didn't really know much about money and business and stuff. So he brought in a financial advisor to help us out. And she sat with us, we paid her 150 bucks. It was $75 an hour, she sat with us for two hours. And I remember my dad writing that check and I knew he didn't really have that kind of money to be dishing it out, but he knew how important it was for us to get a good financial education and get started on the right track. So my dad was actually an entrepreneur, I would say, and that's where I learned the spirit of being an entrepreneur and the value of working for yourself. So I would encourage you to teach your children about different ways you could live and make a living. So my dad worked a regular job until he was in his 30s, and I was a teenager, I would, I would guess, at that time. And 
so he didn't really have any money saved in his 30s. He realized he was not going to be able to retire at the rate he was making money versus spending it. So he quit his regular job and bought a piece of property. And this was with all of his savings, like everything, an all-in investment uh, was risky. It was very risky. But he was able to sell that piece of property for double what he bought it for after making some improvements. And basically, he just repeated this process with probably 10 pieces of property, I'm going to guess, doubling his money every time, 100% risk every time by going all in as much as he could afford. And by the last piece, he sold it for millions of dollars. And within a time period of five or seven years, was able to retire. So I witnessed this as a teenager going from like totally we're broke, we're the poorest people on the block to my dad bought a brand new Ford Mustang and he's retiring. So uh, it's ingrained in our blood, I think a little bit that, you know, if you want something and you want to go get it yourself and you're willing to work really hard, you know, it's pretty much anything's possible. There's something that happens to me a lot that really frustrates me. As an entrepreneur, I really try to help other entrepreneurs. Uh, that can come in a lot of different forms. It's usually advice, mentoring, different things. It gets handled really poorly by them. Um, and meaning like introducing people to other people and they just don't handle it well. They don't follow up or they don't do something. And overall, over the years, that has really increased and created a reluctance for me to help people sometimes. It really, it, most of the time, it's not that any of these people have poor intentions. It's usually related to some level of inexperience and kind of un understanding the unwritten rules of entrepreneurship as well as the written ones. I really encourage that you create agreements and boundaries and details about what's appropriate and what isn't. And also, if you're involved with other people and you have these same kind of agreements present, honor them. Not doing so is a problem sometimes in relationships. And your goal is to build long-term big things. So don't sacrifice the long-term on the altar of the immediate. Probably some of the best advice that I could give. Hey, I'm here to share the real story of stuff. And I think that if you want help from people, Make it easy for people to help you, and you'll find you get a lot of help. Try it out. Now you'll be surprised at the info you get is by letting them talk, so I'm letting them talk. Gotta keep quiet, maneuver in science, then let them in, talk up their body, get another one body, that's just how it go. I got some secrets, I'm shaking the game so they stay on their toes. Stay in your lane, I'll stay on the go. I can to play with the pros and act like a rookie, so they overlook me, then I double up again, none of their nose. None of them cold, they just got lucky but never adapted, so I'm to the one if it's coming to blows. My enemies cutting it close, I let them think that they got me, but what do you know? I had them beat before we ever spoke, I'm ready for smoke.